Hello and welcome back to the HCC TV Student Lounge. This is a show done by HCC students for HCC students to give your opinions in news, entertainment, and what's going on in school. Hi, Karina, it's so good to have you back. We missed you here. Hello, Kaya. I miss you guys so much. Thank you so much for covering me. We are also joined today by Francisco, Josh, Chaz, and Benjamin, who is leaving us, and this is actually his last show. Thank you so much for your support, Benjamin. It wouldn't have been uh, this way without you. And we started from zero. You helped us bring this show up, and it's been so successful. So thank you so much for your help. No, well, thank you for having me. And then I also want to be I'll say special thanks to everybody in the HCC TV team. I mean, you know, there are people who believed in us, and uh, they actually give us a platform for us to have a show. Um, like, you know, we're, we're all here in front of camera, but we have people behind the cameras as well, like Tony, you know, she really believed in us. We also have Ray and, you know, everybody else in the team who, you know, supported us and it's like, you know, try this, try this, like, and I, I just feel so, um, overwhelmed with like, um, with the support that, that, that they have given us. And so I want to say thanks for that. And also to you guys for also building those friendships. And I know, one day we'll cross paths again, especially in this industry that we, we're in. So, you know, thank, thanks to everybody. So <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm about to start crying, so I'm gonna stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Benjamin, and you are always welcome to the Student Lounge. We're okay. also joined today by Brenda Rios Brombacher, who is here to talk about successful women in business and as entrepreneurs. But first, let's move into our top three news of the week. Well, first of all, don't forget that March 14 is daylight savings, this uh, time during our spring break. And our first news, uh, join Student Life as we kick up Women's History Month with a discussion with guest speaker Margot Baines, the founder of Social Enterprise, Chicks with Class. She'll be discussing entrepreneurship and empowerment tools. And uh, Margot Baines is a financial advisor turned entrepreneur. Her organization, helps increase confidence, self-esteem, self-worth, and emphasize positive body image in young girls. Such an interesting topic. This will be hosted by Women's Empowerment Month on March 10, from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. And we're gonna have the information over here, the email, and don't forget to log in into the Student Life events and you'll have all the information there. Now we also have a um, discussion. You can join Student Live to discuss the issue that is being uh, around the world about human trafficking. Dr. Nisi Hamilton and Catherine Greenan will facilitate a real discussion of the importance of stopping hu human trafficking. And I actually covered uh, an event with Nisi Hamilton, such a great uh, lady. She explained everything from her personal life and this is a, a really important topic that uh, will touch your heart. And this will be hosted by Women's Empowerment Month as well on March the 4th and from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Do you happen to remember this uh, human trafficking discussion, Kyle? Yeah, I, I remember I was, uh, we had this discussion here. And again, one thing that I, I thought was kind of interesting is that I honestly in Brazil, like it happens, but it's not like here. I didn't, I didn't know it was such a big thing in the USA, especially in Houston, Texas, you know, that it happens a lot more often than we think. And I've heard even stories of people that are close to us of, you know, people trying to get to that. I don't know if you saw that, but here in Houston, they've been doing, trying, uh, like sort of like a trick. They put like some sort of like trash or like a water bottle outside of your car, you know, especially if you're a woman. And once you go out to check what it is, they kind of grab you and kidnap you and, you know, so it's terrible, but I've seen like some people commenting to be careful. So I'm just letting you guys know if you see something strange outside of your car, especially if you live in like in a complex apartment and it's late at night, you know, you know, try to be really careful, take a look on your surrounds because it's crazy, you know, and you think that we, it, it can never happen to us, but trust me, it, it can't. So be careful. Yes, yeah, she actually brings awareness and she gives tips on how to what, what what's like you're the target and how to know if you are at some kind of risk, like from dating or, you know, just what you mentioned. So it's really um, important information. So don't forget, uh, it's on March 4th uh, from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Now, we also have the Women of Color Conference happening on March 31st. 
And this is from the Center of Entrepreneurship Southeast College. It's from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. and it's gonna happen online. So please register through the link that we will provide over here. And also our guests will bring up some more information about uh, this event. Now let's begin our first topic, which makes way to a great discussion. Our team will give some examples of women in, of women in history, politics, technology, and even sports. Now, Kaya, who do you want to talk about today? So I first wanted to go back a little bit in history so we kind of know where we are right now. So in the, in the 18th centuries, uh, you know, 19th centuries, when the Industrial Revolution started, a lot of the people that used to work on the factory were men. And at that point, they need more labor. So they started actually hiring women and kids to work. And, and now that was a big issue because a lot of kids start working when they were like five or six or even lower than that. And of course, in some cases, the pollution was terrible for them. So work for the women. And but here the US, USA start changing a lot more towards the World War II when women were supposed to go work since all the men went to war. And that's the person I want to talk about is Rosie the Riveter, which is a, co a cultural icon of World War II, which represent all those women that were working in, in the place of the men that went to war. So you've probably seen this poster before, and it's something that I'm pretty sure you've seen the history classes. It's, you know, iconic uh, uh, of the USA. So it's pretty interesting to see how much it changed. And at the same time, still things are having changed. For example, at that time, Women used to complain that they used to do the same work as men, but they still getting paid less. And until today, we're still seeing this. And then we're actually going to talk about that with your guests. So I'm just going to hold in here for now. And another important woman that I would like to talk about, it's my mom. You know, <laughs> a lot of people say, oh, you know, but it's true. I haven't seen her in a year and a half because of the pandemic. So I really miss her. And, you know, of course, she's the woman of my life and I miss her so much. And I just can't wait to go back home and give her a hug, especially for the Women's International Day, which is, is approaching. So happy Women's Day, mom. I love you. Who is next? I love you too, Kyle. Um, so <laughs> I wanted to talk about uh, women's suffrage, actually. So uh, women's suffrage means uh, you know, the right to vote. Um, and it's actually a more recent development than I think a lot of people would like to admit. Uh, so the suffrage movement, movement began in the 1820s, 1830s. Uh, but because there's a, you know, a civil war and then a Spanish war and like all these things going on, um, <laughs> there was a lot of setbacks and a lot of like uh, strategy and regime changes. Um, so a lot of the progress um, was overshadowed uh, during that time. Uh, but thanks to the efforts to, of people such as Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Lucretia Mott, and Carrie Chapman Catt, um, the 19th Amendment, which was ratified on August 18th, 1920, so about 100 years ago, uh, was finally um, ratified. Uh, so after 100 years or so, and uh, only a hundred years ago from today um, is when that change finally happened. And actually, um, November 2nd of that year, um, 8 million women voted for the first time. So they definitely took advantage of that. And they're still taking advantage of that today. Uh, since 2014, a higher percentage of eligible women voters have voted um, in major elections when compared to the percentage of eligible male voters. So that's pretty cool. Hopefully, uh, hopefully both of those numbers go up, but uh, it's a good trend to see. Uh, today, I'm actually guys going to be talking to you about a specific woman. I want to talk about Brenda Chapman. Uh, she's honestly one of my inspirations because not only was she a uh, storyboard artist and director, but she was one of the first people of uh, first women to direct uh, an animated movie for like the big screen. And she actually was the director for The Prince of Egypt which honestly to this day still holds up as one of the most beautiful like 2D animated movies. I watch this movie all the time. Like every couple of months, it's like, I need some inspiration for my own work. It's like, ah, oh, let's watch The Prince of Egypt. It's such a good movie. And even when, uh, even if you're someone who's not even into like the, the, the religiosity of it, it's just such a beautiful movie with such a beautiful message. And you know, I want to salute Brenda Chapman today. So I'm also going to talk about a specific woman in history, which is Marie Curie. Uh, Maria was born on November 7th, 1867 in Warsaw, Poland. She studied at Warsaw's Flying University where she began her scientific training. Later in 1895, Curie and her sister moved to Paris to continue their scientific work. Uh, it was there where she met French physicist Paris Curie, uh, which she soon married. And in 1903, they both shared the Nobel Prize in Physics for pioneering the work 
and the theory of radioactivity, which she also came up with the name because this is something that nobody had seen before. Um, even later in 1911, she won the Nobel Prize in chemistry for her discovery of elements in radium and pol polonium, sorry, <laughs> using techniques she invented. Without her, we wouldn't have modern x-rays or even modern cancer treatment. So I think this is pretty cool to have women actually succeed in and, and, and you know, thrive in, in the scientific industry, uh, industry, even back then in the day and how important she was in the industry. So even to this day, she's still considered one of the most important scientists of all time. Well, since Kyle already talked about his mom, I guess I'll have to talk about some other women. So I wanted to talk about three women who basically recently made like big waves in the NFL. So a couple of weeks ago was the Super Bowl between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And for the first time, there were two women coaching, both for the Buccaneers, Lori Locust and Maral Javadafar. And then referee Sarah Thomas became the first woman to officiate a Super Bowl. So I wanted to offer my congratulations to those women for being real trailblazers in the sporting world. That's great. All those uh, women in history, politics, sports, and everywhere. Uh, I'm so happy that we're bringing up this uh, awareness month and we all uh, learn something new about it. Now that we've heard from our crew, let's move into our guest. So uh, why don't you introduce us to her, Kyle? Yeah, I'll introduce her. But one thing that I realized, Carolina, you're the only woman here in front of the camera and we haven't said anything to you. So happy International Women's Day for you. I know, thank you. <laughs> so let's move to your guest. So today we have Brenda Rios Broombacker. I hope I said it right. If not, forgive me, please. Uh, she's the Director of Entrepreneur Initiative and Community Relations here at HCC. So first, how are you today? Hi guys, well, I'm just so excited and honored to be here with you guys. I mean, it's quite a, a strong month and this actually is one of my favorite months of the year every year because um, you know, it's important to empower our women in our community and like you all shared, you know, it's just amazing of, of the milestones that we've had that we've had so far, but I think we have a lot more to go and I can't wait to, to discuss more with you guys. Awesome. Thanks so much for being here. So tell me a little bit about you because we're so excited to, to have you here. So tell me, tell me a little bit. Sure. Well, so I'm actually a Latina. Um, I'm originally from Monterrey and I came here back in 98. So I'm dating myself. Um, but, you know, first immigration Latina, like I started learning English. Uh, you know, my mom was an inspiration on that on that front. Um, you know, fast forward, I did my uh, business, um, sorry, my, my degree in international business at University of Houston downtown. I ended up working at the State Department um, in 2010 and um, with the Obama administration. So I learned the entrepreneurship um, investment that was happening nationally and internationally. And I kind of wanted to bring that here in Houston. Now, you know, in 2020, uh, 2021, like there's a lot of buzz happening in our community, um, especially as minorities are becoming the majority. Uh, so we're quite excited to be here at the Center for Entrepreneurship and, and be of support to all of our entrepreneurs and students who want to become entrepreneurs. That's really interesting. Can you tell me now a little bit about what you do over there? Most definitely. I mean, we have a little bit of everything. I think we go all the way back to supporting um, students in elementary school, letting them know how to get engaged and what entrepreneurship is all about um, through like Lemonade Day. I mean, we this summer, we also have an initiative with Rural Eisen Foundation um, to help a lot of the girls understand more about the STEM careers that are available, what they can do, you know, artificial intelligence, robotics, uh, you know, apps. So we're quite excited to get that started uh, pretty soon. Um, and then it's just uh, also to the entrepreneurs and in, in our community, you know, um, COVID-19 has impacted a lot of the businesses. So any anything that we can support them, where yes, it's their marketing, their financials, even their taxations, because it's, you know, now the system is, is changing. We are here for them. That's really, really, really cool. And I'm glad, you know, I, I, I get happy when I see that things are evolving you know it takes a little bit but it's evolving and what i wanted to talk about was what i i already uh mentioned before in the beginning of the show is uh even though we still have you know we have women now having the same job as men they still get underpaid which is not fair because they literally doing the same work 
So I wanted to hear from you your perspective. Are things changing? And, and I want to just hear your opinion in regards to that. Yeah, you know, I, I want to remain positive um, because, yes, things have changed. Obviously, our roles right now, we work, you know, we, we do full-time work and, and, and kind of have a balance at home, whereas before women didn't have that luxury, right? Um, but if you really break it down into the statistics and into the details of, of data, you know, 30 years ago, we were earning 80 cents, sorry, 64 cents to a dollar in comparison to a man. Now we are at 80 cents, so we're getting closer, but then you break it down into demographics. You know, uh, for black women, it is 63 cents. Uh, for Hispanic women, it's 54 cents, right? For Asian women, it's a little bit higher. It's 87 cents. Um, but, you know, it's, it's just uh, one of those things that, you know, we, we're getting closer when we're at age 35, but then when it comes to leadership positions, you start seeing a trickle down effect going back to women not earning those leadership positions that they are capable of being. So uh, when you look at the American Association of Women Universities data, they actually mentioned, they forecasted that in order for women to be the same as men, like $1 to a dollar, it's gonna be two uh, like 2,100, like 2119. That's the year, like not even my lifetime or your lifetime. and. You know, at that speed, that's kind of discouraging um, and there's a lot more work to do. And, and we hope that, that that's not the case, that hopefully we can see it ourselves. Yeah, I, I really believe that things are changing and can change. You know, for example, what you do here at HCC, you know, you definitely change lives and you also help to change the whole society. You know, the way we think, the way we respect women and the way we see even as a business and a co-worker partner, let's say that this way. So. We're, we're walking towards that and I believe, you know, we, we, we're doing good, but we can do much better. And I would like to invite Carolina now to ask, now woman to woman, feel free to ask anything. <laughs> yeah, actually, since you're talking about that, I was thinking, what, what, are, the, what are some ways that, to promote that gender equality in our daily lives? So from students to our community in general, in the family, how do you think that we can uh, promote that so we can get there even faster. Yeah, I think, um, you know, a lot of people talk about mentorships and making sure you have a mentor, especially for women in a career path, um, looking into role models, and they don't necessarily have to be women, right, in, in leadership positions, but at least that you can shadow uh, and understand the steps to, to grow. Um, but it also goes back into at home, like if you have a wife or a daughter or, you know, a cousin or, or a sibling, uh, make sure that you are also cooperating with a lot of the chores, the household chores, because sometimes depending on our culture, that actually, you know, goes back to women's responsibility to do those things. So making sure you have some sort of like equal or a balance um time frame you know could help a lot of our, our students our female students um and i think that it starts from home um and i think those are like two two things that i can I already see things changing that way right uh, you even see advertisements now who is like by parents who is like the the dad taking care of the kids um things you know that kind of awareness does help yes absolutely i agree now in, in entrepreneurship, what resources do you offer to uh, women who want to become entrepreneurs? Yeah, and in fact, well, you'll see the graphics here, but there is you know, a couple of great resources here in Houston. Uh, one big um, startup uh, by Carolyn, um, her, uh, the name is Hello Alice, helloalice.com, and this is for free. It's kind of a networking uh, for all women entrepreneurs in, in Houston, but also you can network across the world. Um, and they do a lot of funding and marketing and so on. So that's a really good effort. When it comes to investment, um, there is one new organization called the Business Association Minority, um, it's called BAMA. Um, so definitely check them out. Again, this is for free, but you have to make sure that you have a portfolio and already a startup that's running, um, looking into get investment. And then resources like in government, you know, the Small Business uh, Administration has uh, programs like SCORE, uh, the, uh, the Greater uh, Women's Business Center, 
um, the Greater Women's uh, Chamber of Commerce. A couple of the chambers of commerce are there for you. Um, so definitely, um, you know, definitely check it out. Sometimes people think that because um, programs are for free, that they're not good to take, or they're probably they want to get you um, get your information and sell you something. Not in this case. I think these resources are here um, because a lot, especially in the government, they are trying to change the dynamics and, and making sure there is support. So uh, take advantage of all this free stuff that's your way. Oh yeah, absolutely. Never underestimate free uh, courses or everything. I'm one of those people who really go through uh, free courses online and stuff like that. And this also um, includes funding for someone who has a startup. Yeah, so like you can have an idea, you know, um, there are a couple of initiatives that people do give a little bit of funding or it's called seed funding. Um, so yes, they do have those things. Or it's also resources are for free to put a budget together and then you can pitch it to financial institutions. Oh, well, that was fascinating to hear about, uh, Brenda. Thank you so much for being in our show. And I'll absolutely check everything out to see if uh, even myself, I can do that. Yes, please do. Uh, we're here for you. <laughs> and as you know, we also cover things entertaining. And at this time, since we are celebrating Women His History Month, I'll start with the first film, Agra. So Agra is a 2009 historical drama film directed by Alejandra Amenabar. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. And it's a biographical film starring a Rachel Weisz as Hypatia. And she is a mathematician, philosopher, and astronomer in the late fourth century, Roman Egypt. And she has an, in, in, investi she investigates the flaws of geocentric Ptolemaic system and the heliocentric model that challenges it. Now, surrounded by religious disturbance and social unrest, Hypatia struggles to save the knowledge uh, since uh, they were invaded, um, attacked by the Christians and this library uh, was destroyed. And this Greek philosopher is a teacher at the Greek Platonic School where, father, where future leaders were educated. And due to the religion's objections that I just uh, mentioned, uh, she was forbidden by, to teach in this school. Now, um, so I don't say all the details at the end, um, she was considered a witch because she has she had a lot of influence over um, this uh, scientific um, investigations. And just check out the the end. I'm not gonna spoil for you, but it's just uh, very interesting. I love watching this movie. And in Houston, they actually have a coffee shop, which is my favorite coffee shop, and it's called Agra as well. And I think it's because of this, and it's all decorated uh, like with great uh, sculptures and all of that. Now, who wants to tell us a little bit about another film? Me, me, me. I actually want to refer a, a TV show, Netflix. Um, it's called Good Girls. And the reason why I'm referring to this is because usually you see like action movies and TV shows. It's usually the protagonists are men. And what I really like about this is because it's like three main characters and they're both women. And they have like ordinary life. And let's say this way. You know, one is a housewife. Uh, the other one... Um, She's a single mom, and the other one's like she's uh, married to a cop, and she's really like religious, and 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 just so interesting because they start to uh, go to financial hardship, so they actually need money, so they decided to uh, steal a, a grocery store, and of course it didn't go too well, and I don't want to give too much information, but that was not the first crime they committed because things start getting more intense, intense, and they need to keep doing some wrong things but it's so good because it's it's a different perspective and that's what i call it good girls you know to see uh women actually you know doing action stuff so it's pretty fun my girlfriend for example loves the show we watch together and they actually come with the fourth season uh this month in march i think 21st if i'm not mistaken but it's this month for sure so you should definitely check that out um i'd like to recommend a documentary called be natural uh, so the documentary, it's by um, documentarian Paula, Pamela B. Green, um, and it's about her looking into um, one of the early pioneers of narrative film, uh, her, whose name is Alice Guy Blachet. Um, so Alice Guy Blachet, she was from France, and she was, um, she was like present, 
the first time that the Lumiere brothers, who really like invented um, film, basically as we understand it, uh, moving film rather than not not just like film cameras. Um, and so they kind of just did it as like a like a scientific purpose. But she realized that it could be used for narrative purposes and to tell stories. Um, but after you know after being the first person to start a studio like a film studio and like making all these early narrative films and being super influential she kind of like was forgotten by by like pretty much everyone so the documentary goes through and has a lot of famous people um including jody foster who is the narrator actually and it goes through um, asking all these people like if you know her and like educating them um on you know what happened with her and why her story is kind of missing and Bringing, bringing all of her contributions to light. So uh, you might have to like rent it or something, but uh, I definitely recommend it. It's called Be Natural. Uh, so I want to talk about uh, this time about a person in the entertainment business. I want to talk about Gloria Stefan, uh, born as Gloria Maria Fajardo. This Cuban born Grammy award winner singer is better known as Gloria Stefan, considered to be one of the most successful ever crossover performers in Latin music. Uh, Gloria is also counted among the 100 best-selling artists with an estimated worldwide sales of 100 million records. Uh, Gloria didn't only make way for only Latino artists, but for women in the entertainment business as well. So if you definitely want to get your body moving with her fantastic music, definitely check out Gloria Stefan and just add her on to your music playlist. And I know at some parties, you probably heard of the, come on, everybody, she can do the tango. I won't sing anymore because I don't want to get the, the DMCA, but you know. Definitely check out Gloria Stefan on Spotify or anything you have music on. <laughs> Those are all great suggestions. And one thing we don't talk about a lot is video games. So one uh, character that I wanted to recommend her series is called Metroid. Uh, it's a 1986. It started around that time. It's by Nintendo. And you play as a galactic bounty hunter named Samus. And most people just see this person in like a body armor suit. And they just think, oh, that's probably a man. Like most of the characters were back in the 80s. But at the very end of the game, the helmet is taken off and it's revealed that she's a woman, which shocked everyone. And it's, she's become one of like the landmark females in all of gaming. Perfect. Thank you very much, Josh. Uh, I think those are really good suggestions. And uh, that was an exciting show. I think it's the first time that we actually do a show just for women. And I think he, 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 you ladies deserve more than this. You know, thank you so much again for guests for being here. Carolina, thank you for making part of the team to bring balance. And and I think that's it for today's guy. Thanks so much for watching. Stick to the end because we have the funny video or the meme of the week. And as always, I see you next week. Yes, don't forget to send us your opinion. Also send us topic that you, that you would like to discuss. And this was, a, this was a great show. I love talking about women. And we'll see you next time on the Student Lounge.